back a little bit on one of the slides. First, and talk about uh, what actually are, tra are we trying to do and why do you think this has not been done yet? Now we talked about the requirements of different apps uh, regarding their data sync and uh, capability and uh, availability and uh, storage and user convenience, etc. So, of course, the color based architecture <coughs> is capable of covering all of these use cases. However, it's an, it is an overkill for most of them. And that's why I would like to first pinpoint describe the application that are a good fit for this architecture so that one bites the bullet and decides to go for it to implement something so complex. <coughs> now the applications that actually have such demands are also well known. And I will present an example of this uh, I'll, I'll demo such a prototype application in a short while. Mm -hmm. That application <coughs> is for business events. For instance, conferences, trade shows, or uh, seminars, or any sort of <coughs> business event. Why this use case is especially well suited for Couchbase? Well, first of all, these conferences are only three days long, usually, or four. And most of the time, the data for them is ready the previous evening. This, however, this obviously puts quite a bit of strain on the synchronization mechanism because the user basically cannot use the app until the very last moment. So all of a sudden, the app has to be populated with all data immediately available to the user. Also, these conferences, no matter how well they are organized, often uh, involve or include uh, changes, speaker sessions, changes, room changes, alerts, somebody has fainted, the boots for this company has been changed from uh, one building to another. In Las Vegas, for instance, the CES show, which has multiple buildings besides the convention center, that's possible. So all sorts of changes that are immediately generated on demand have to be also propagated immediately to everyone because it's going to be quite annoying if you go and then you understand that actually the room has changed, for example. And the third requirement, so, so everything has to happen very quickly. People also <coughs> would like to socialize with their mobile phones, especially business users. They are very adamant of, uh, and, of uh, and, uh, capable and willing to set ad hoc meetings using the app because they don't know their phone or because they, the coverage is bad or because they can broadcast the intention of a meeting to multiple users using the application. That's the easiest way to do. So, Sync has to work very quickly in both directions. Huge amounts of data need to be transferred, transmitted to the user. And the user has to have a great experience because if there is an impatient user that is exactly the business, if something does not work out, they throw out the application and they get a paper map. They don't bother at all. There is no second chance. If it doesn't work all the time, the way it's affected, the way their mindset is set, they don't use it. That's it. So because of all of these requirements, a couch base is a good match for this sort of uh, <coughs> use case. Okay, let's now go to the application itself. <coughs> oh, I don't have sound. I need network connectivity, I forgot about that. It's okay, ResGuest at your service. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> wi Fi, ResGuest. I'm going to ask for the password. <laughs> Your res guest? Res guest. Okay. Is it the secret password or? And the password is. Sweet right. The catalyst. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody who remembered. Remember the slip that they needed to write. Yeah. R I G H T. And then? And that's it? Yeah. Right. And then? Can I ask a heresy question? Yes. Will this, any of this work on uh, Windows platform? Uh, 
this, all of this, the side. What, what you're talking about right now, the couch bed. <coughs> no other mobile platform is support, supported by couch base like currently, besides uh, the native implementations on Android and iOS, and also they support cross-platform tools. For example, uh, what are called? Most of them are JavaScript-based. What are they called? I forgot. Although I, I, I used to write a lot of Take it. Yes. Phonia. And Sentry Touch, I think, and Accelerator Titanium is also supported. But I don't think there is a native support for a Windows Phone at this point. This is how the application looks in general. It is called Linear Attend. And I promise to, uh, to say a little bit more to Paul about what's happening with uh, Linear <coughs> because it's a unknown entity. What happened last year was that Vista Equity Partners, which is the eighth biggest uh, software development owner in the world, it's basically a uh, partnership they invested by companies bought three local companies in San Diego. One of them was WebSense. The manufacturer of all of those uh, corporate uh, firewalls and uh, <coughs> proxies and everything that restricts the <laughs> office workers of accessing any other sites besides the explicitly permitted. Another company that they bought was Omnitrax, which used to be part of Qualcomm. Mm -hmm. And they do the GPS tracking for a fleet, for many fleets of uh, commercial trucks. Mm -hmm. And the third company bought was the Active Network, which is the number one uh, registration site and, and uh, organization for uh, sports mm -hmm. and for uh, fishing licenses, and which also had a business division. That is that was called uh, yeah they had a business solutions group active network so once once they bought these three companies mm -hmm. this uh, split active network especially the business solution division the business solutions group which were doing the mobile uh, um, application and the server side uh, support for the <coughs> corporate events and they merged it with another company which was specializing in providing accommodation. Uh, bookings and reservations. So that was a good fat fit. One company does the uh, event management and, uh, the, uh, and the other company does the event organization in a better sense. So in short, uh, the business solutions group was cut out from, the, from Active Network and it was uh, actually merged with Lania. Now, the software that I'm going to show you was developed for Lania last year, for uh, the Business Solutions Group, which was much with Lania last year. That is why you see the Lania package names and the uh, Lania brand. In the meantime, however, what happened uh, in, in the spring and the summer of last year was that Vista started moving all these three major San Diego software companies to Texas. So, uh, the first one to go was WebSense currently to Austin, <coughs> and the other two are currently in the process being moved. The active network is almost moved. The last one is on the tracks, and they will be moved to Dallas. That is why maybe they didn't have the expertise to continue developing the software that we've developed for them for four or five or six months, 
and that is why it's still in prototype stage. And that is why I can show it to you because there is no NDA. <laughs> Thank you. Detailed enough? Yeah, that's good. Okay. I always wondered about what yeah. sense. You always wonder, now you know. Yeah. The, this will not be the last time that a local company is actually leaving. I, I heard about other major companies also relocating. I don't know what's happening. Texas does not have uh, business tax, as you, as you know, and uh, uh, the active network uh, received four and a half million relocation expenses directly from the budget of the governor, Perry. So Texas is doing everything to cut off the... <laughs> Is, is the ResNet moving anytime soon? Of course not. Of course not. Was the ResNet moving in Texas anyway? No, that was just a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an unfounded rumor, just like the rumor about the active network one and a half years ago. So let's not get sidetracked too far. Okay. Let's see some code. All right, so the application looks like a normal <laughs> standard <coughs> application using KitKat, which is a version 4.x of Android. And it has a dashboard with a uh, clock and uh, a list of the sessions that the corporate attendees will uh, are about to attend. And so there is a notion of a schedule and one can add a session. Most of the application, unfortunately, does not work because uh, all of our access after, we, after the company relocated got cut off. So we don't have access to our Amazon services, and yesterday I checked once more again, we don't have them. So my demo is going to be kind of short. We will concentrate more on the, on the source code side a little bit. But I just wanted to show how it looks like, and what it's supposed to do, just in, uh, in a couple of minutes. So there is a dashboard, which gives an overview of what is for, uh, the sessions for today and all of the other uh, relevant elements, what's the social feed, uh, just uh, at a glance, the dashboard of the entire application. There is a left-hand side menu, which one can choose, uh, different parts of it. And there is a normal bar, Android bar on the top, with the context uh, buttons. And then you can use also a drop-down menu here. There is an overflow menu, just the standard uh, uh, features of a full-fledged uh, Android uh, application. 4.x, 4.0.2 is the minimum version that this runs on. And there on the right hand side, there is a list of the sessions. So uh, we have two panes that overlap each other and that are, as you can see, synchronized. So that's on the UI front. Now, what I was about to show is that using an external tool simulating a server update to see how fast it comes on the user interface. However, I, I sincerely doubt that uh, the Amazon services uh, Sync Gateway and Server are still available so many months later. And indeed, when I today tried them out, it was not working. What we have done for testing purposes to test this application, besides the normal unit tests, we were using Rob Electric for unit tests, which is a uh, uh, which is a uh, mocking network. Most of the Android API is mocked out and it runs in a JVM, not on a device. So we were using that one for uh, the unit is, uh, testing. If somebody is interested, after I complete the main part of my uh, code review, I will go into how to test the job as well. But probably there will be no time for that in anyway. so, uh, In order to test, however, the server side component, we installed on the uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, Sync Gateway, and um, a server, uh, which we configured as well. And in order not to have to log in there and initiate a server change, we wrote a um, specific um, a set of scripts to emulate as if the update is coming from the server, but which will run on the client side, on our uh, workstations. Does this make sense? So we wrote them using Node.js. By the way, um, most of the couch-based architecture, if, except for the native parts, is uh, written using Node.js, which is gradually emerging as the default implementation of uh, web servers and web services, a sort of a 
lightweight one, but quite performant. So we wrote also some, uh, our scripts are also uh, kind of dependent on that. So we have a configuration in our code, how to access the same gateway server. There is a configuration which determines, it's called sim properties. And I'm not afraid to show you the admin password because it's not working anymore. <laughs> so this is the endpoint for the sync gateway. It is as you can see hosted on the uh, sync uh, on, uh, on Amazon. And also we have an authentication proxy which we have implemented for user authentication, which is part of the entire architecture as well, so that we can have different types of users. Okay, so uh, the, the scripts that we've written, there are several scripts to their JavaScripts in order to update the, uh, the server side by adding and moving sessions and or other data, and we would measure the time, how long it takes in order to, for the change on the server side to propagate to the client side as well. If all claims are uh, justified, it has to be instantaneous because that's the whole goal. It has to be transparent and instantaneous, almost instantaneous. And uh, where is Stan? Stan, this thing, what I'm about to show right now with the, the, the server side update, you remember this work back in February, correct? Because you were there at the meeting of the San Diego uh, yeah. Android. Well, I'm doing the same thing right now by injecting a, a session, but I'm certain that's not gonna work. That's why it, it, it was important for Stan to be here because he can vouch. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to inject a session which is called 1074 uh, which uh, I've changed the, the, the time to start at 2014, which is inside the next hour. So it should, actually what should happen is it should show up here in the sessions for today, right? Because today it's still that time. But when I try to do that, tries to connect to, it should have returned already with an OK message that the session has been inserted, but there is no OK message and there is no update. But it actually takes, takes the script more time to exit the script itself than the update to be received. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate that, but it was working. <laughs> Ask that. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing is showing in the session here. So I cannot demo exactly what I'm talking about, which is bad form, but it doesn't depend on me, as you can easily imagine. And I'm not about to rent or make an appliance just for this presentation. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, that's we, it. We have $14 in the kitty. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> I have to install them by seeing it when the server I can configure them. Uh -huh. And, yeah, you know, I'm gonna do that. All right, so uh, that was the unsuccessful attempt at the uh, demo. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll be switching. Any, any questions about the user interface? how things are configured at this point. Because I'm switching to hardcore notions of the, I'm gonna talk right now about, um, about the, let me bring it up. I'm gonna talk about manager, database, document, all these objects and how they are used inside the application. No questions, all right. Only one uh, question. So on the current side, you said that there's a service that's listening to the events coming in. Right? Correct. Okay. When you install the application, is that a separate configuration or it just comes in with this? You have to consider the, the same service. I'll show you an example. It gets started up, uh, uh, it, it, it does get started up uh, as whenever the, it runs always. It is one of those services that Android does not like that much because they are not constantly in the background. So the couch-based guys have uh, considered, have put some sleep, I think, on it. Just so the question is, when you install the app, 
Yes. Number one, or B, you have to make separate configuration, or part of the installation is configured? It is part of the installation. You don't need to uh, install anything uh, um, separately. And if you take a look here, that's a very good question, actually. If you take a look at the code, there is this ellipse. You see that there is a couch based like Android. There are dependent libraries as well, that all, all of those are needed. And they come prepackaged. Also, as you can see, there is a native file, which is written in C and pre-compiled for a specific, a specific ar architecture. So there was a lot of effort put into this to make it as fast, responsive, and lightweight as it can be. That answers the question, right? Well, um, the libraries are coming in, but you still need to configure with uh, listeners and uh, you have to configure the listener on the sync gateway, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the sync gateway on the Android side, not on the server. Uh, you have to configure, okay, the, the, sync gateway, the sync gateway has a passive verification endpoint. There is a listener on one or multiple ports. That's how it's implemented. Part, what I'm showing you right now, the sync URL just points directly to that port and to the web service that is implemented there. Mm -hmm. That is part of the configuration. Yeah, there is a push notification coming in. There is no push, push notification. This is pull, pull and push, no non notification. Push notification is something else. I know from the calculus. Right. So, so there is a, uh, like a, I don't know what they, how they do it, but there's, there's a way that a service can actually push an event to the Android to notify that there's new data. That is actually not exactly what's happening. In college ways, you, you define on the client side a, a, both a push and a pull replication, and we'll see an example of that one. Okay. That's how it's done. But that UI interface is a uh, you know, customized product, or is Yeah, that UI has been created from scratch. Actually, there, were, uh, <laughs> there was a team of two developers, uh, a project manager, and UI designer and UX designer that came up with all of this. And the two developers were myself and uh, another person who was mostly working on couch based like server side, whereas I was uh, working more on the UI that you saw. Mm -hmm. It's created from scratch based on design, it's not something generic. And uh, also, I was kind of responsible for synchronizing and getting the data from the local database, NoSQL database. Uh, So we have kind of a separation of concern. And he's probably the better person to talk, but he did not want to. So <laughs> I was actually expecting to have two presenters for the same topic. That would be ideal, but okay. All right, so these are the notions. I'll keep this slide. These are the notions that we have been concerned with. Manager, database, document, query, live query, model, application. So we are beginning the code review right now. We talked about the libraries that are used how uh, the, 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 the synchronization properties are also defined. So let's start with this. Um, okay. so you, you have like a, a software library in there. What do you need? You have a software library in the list? But you yeah. put Frank, I cannot hear what you're saying. In you, have the cloud a, you have a software library in there. Or are you using the software on the web server? Software library two, three, all the way down the last two. So the web server? Yeah. I'm not sure what they are useful to tell us. <laughs> Again, we have to ask the other guy. Oh, I think w what we had was also a, a local installation for testing purposes. And maybe that's why we needed them. Should because we were able to run also right? locally some of the things. Not sure. <laughs> Sorry, cannot don't don't know more than that. Okay. So, uh, all right. this, all the bodies and the textures, what kind of environment is it? Uh, as you can see, I'm using Eclipse right now. That was some of our developer tools of choice back then. I since switched to Android Studio, which at this point, I can say you can switch to it, although it still has, it's very quirky. 
So if you don't need to switch necessarily, stay away. <laughs> okay, so uh, the maybe from the manifest, do I have the manifest? We have a, our <coughs> conference application class will start from there. So as you know, uh, our application class is not required for Android. It could be used in order to configure or use some functionality that is used across the entire application. But usually what is needed just is just a, a activity which is the edge point for the application and the first screen that's shown. In our case, we decided we need a uh, uh, application class, conference application, in order to get a hold of uh, some uh, often used uh, uh, objects. For example, I'm not going to talk about identity and how user authentication is done, but that is done across the entire application, so that is consistent everywhere. There is also a session model, which determines how sessions are represented. And also, the most important is the syncer. The syncer is actually what, the, what does the work. Now, as you can see, there is a static handle on the syncer here, so that there is a setter and a getter. And the session model uh, has just the usual properties. There is a method called init sinker, which uh, um, calls the init method on the static sinker. The next thing we'll see, as you can see in my left-right order of preparation, will be the sinker itself. And then that's mostly it. Log user in. Okay. Now let's go to the sinker. The sinker gets a hold of uh, the database manager, the top level class that uh, is used to access and create the databases themselves. And in its init method, which is called from the main application class. What's happening is we instantiate a new manager in the global context and then we use the default options of the manager to configure it. If, if this is, if we, if, if we cannot get hold of the manager for some reason, obviously we cannot do anything. So there is uh, some sort of uh, error process as well. And then we are re reading from the properties uh, certain uh, configuration properties for the endpoints and also for the uh, which I just showed it to you for instance the SQL error that's what's happening in the sinker class itself and then we uh, go uh, get the handle of the database name and then what's the authentication proxy these are properties for the, for the remote sync gateway to work and then uh, what do we do next this is how it's, uh, this is how the, the, the sinker is actually initialized. The get database method uh, basically checks whether the database has been created and properly populated, which is part of the installation. And then it just simply gets a hold on that one. Here is the relevant call. Manager get database. Right? That's what, that's what the manager is, is used for. Back. This is here, the no manager from the very top. I'm talking about that one. Oh, what happened here? Let's see. Yeah, this is the top level cloud based light object which manages the connection of the Getting back to the code, now there are methods here also in the sinker which are used to create the queries that we'll be interested, that we're interested in. And the views that we'll be using, a view is a, a noise scale notion that uh, corresponds to a group of 
documents or parts of documents that you see either presented or worked on, basically. So, we have several methods of how to create a query. And um, all of them uh, reformat the result. They work on top of, they work on top of the uh, standard we presented in, in uh, couch-based like queries and we use the underlying implementation to somehow reformat them and apply some options to them. For instance, the option that we apply might be my view, which I'm going to retrieve using this query, should be only for a type interval. One of the options might be this. So we do something like a web clause in the SQLite uh, world. This is called options in the NoSQL gates on the database. And then, which is important, is the method I'd like to use it this one in our simple. So for our database, uh, based on uh, what uh, what do we want to listen to on that query, we give a parameter which is the live query. The, the, the way to get a query from a live query is simple as you can see but uh, by casting or there is also a method which says this query has to be a live query. I know I'm talking a little bit just like uh, from uh, from airplane point of view, but uh, uh, the live query, we, you, can, you cannot use the direct query. The, the, the queries are just like static because they have less overhead. We need to uh, uh, define live queries which listen to changes for the underlying database only when needed. That is why there is a separate notion, a subclass of query, which is called the live query. And then on that live query, as you can see, add a change listener with the listener that you define somewhere else. That, that's that easy, basically. All right, further on, there is a method called start sync. In order for the sync to work, one, one needs to define how the syncing is going to work. As you can imagine, at a certain point, whenever the application starts, this start method on the syncer gets also called to start the sync. Now, uh, in order for the thing to work, you basically create two replications, which run as background threads, and uh, you create them either as a pull replication or as a push replication. There are no more... Uh, we try to experiment uh, to, to define the push and pull in a specific manner, and we messed it up, and we saw that the people who have written the framework know what they are doing better than us, so we just didn't we stopped experimenting with the many options that time based on this, based on that, start, stop uh, replication, pull and push, and we just went with the defaults. Seemed to work pretty well. Yeah, and then there are push filters as well that we can use, you know, in order to uh, want to get a, uh, a specific, uh, well, let me go to uh, create a replication. So this is how a replication is, is created. You get the database, and then you code the database to create a pull, a pull replication or a push replication based on the CQL error. That's all you need to do, basically. This is how you create a replication. It's very simple, you can see in the Does everybody follow so far? So, uh, yeah, and there is a getter to get the replication as well. Uh, you can enumerate all the replication, and then there are specific methods in order the simple URL to be. Uh, these are low level stuff. I'm not going to talk about this too much. Let me see whether there is something. Good. But as you can see, what I'm trying to show is quite a bit of work, actually. It's very simple if you know what you're doing. But the it's even harder than, you, than, than uh, starting to learn Emacs, I'm telling you. It's that complex. So, so there is a very steep learning curve at the very beginning because all of this is supposedly, you see the example, this will be very simple, that just to wrap your head around this and just to understand all of the diff different parts is not that easy. So there is a very steep learning curve in the beginning and that's why I was trying, I'm, I'm showing to you just to confirm this opinion, also, I'm trying to identify where one should use something like this because for many applications, this is, this is not working, obviously. All right, so get replication. 
They will also have to update the replicators based on the cookies we set, especially for when the user is logged in or not, because we allow the user to use the, our mobile attendee application anonymously. That user can browse, can see the list of all sessions, can do a lot of things. Only when a user wants to build a profile, then that user needs to be authenticated. Right? All right, so set cookie value, authentication type, whether the context, all right. So this is how the sync of starts to basically work. And it's called somewhere. We can even find it. Let us start sync off. Let's go to the main activity, the activity that is firstly shown to the user. When the user starts the application, the first screen is we call it the main activity. That main activity has an onCreate method where all of the UI is being set and all, whatever needs to be happening in order to present the user with the full experience is happening. Now I have to find the method onCreate. Yeah? Here it is, it's quite a long method. And as you can see, we are setting the top action bar here, we are doing the left drawer, the right drawer, this is all irrelevant at this point for Couchbase. What is relevant to Couchbase, however, is we are setting some custom themes. Here, drawer, drawer, and drawer closed. Okay, there should be sync data called somewhere. Yeah, sync data is called somewhere. And what's happening then is Conference application get sync or start sync. At this point, the sync array, which is a static uh, this initialized class, should be uh, available and it can start syncing at this point. Now, the interesting matter here is this update query. We set a new date and we set the query option for our query. The now till enter day option. As you can see, we can determine the we determine options, which is equivalent to where clauses or conditions for the SQL uh, databases on our um, uh, on, on our um, query, and then we call the create query method on the sinker with these options that we just defined, and passing the the view that needs to retrieve all of the sessions that are in the database, hopefully synchronized at this point already, retrieved from the server. And then this is the method that I mentioned. We transform the query to a live query and we add the live query listener. So basically what's happening here is this. Um, the seeker starts syncing. At the very beginning, there might be no data in the database which is normally when the user first, first installs the application. However, we still set up everything in place so that the moment there is some data, it is immediately available. That is why we define for the most important option now till end of the day, which is shown in the main application uh, screen, in the dashboard that I showed to you guys, uh, we define a live query because we know that this is the most important uh, part that the user is going to use and it has to be updated as soon as possible. All right, so now how does the, how does the syncer work? Now, once, you, once one adds the live query listener with the parameters that we already saw, a required parameter is this provided change listener on a live query, there is a callback. This method will be called whenever something changes, just as it normally is done in the uh, listener architecture of um, Android. So what's happening is that once we get called, then 
our method display rows will be called as well. And so we have to look what display rows does. This is exactly what how uh, normally well, this is the pattern to be used in the couch based uh, light, uh, light architecture. So that's the standard way of doing it. It obviously because of that is very important. What's happening in display rows is this. We have our uh, session model, which is the model of uh, a session having the um, presenter, time, room, uh, length of uh, title of uh, all of, the, of, of the, that particular uh, session. And we are using a mapper, a session transformer, which I mentioned is not provided in the Android case, but it's provided in the iOS case in order to map one to the other. So we are getting all the, of the rows based on some sort of an enumerator. In short, we are getting all the rows. And then what we have to do is we have to update the UI thread. Currently, we are doing this with a run on the UI thread method provided by Android. This is provided by the Android uh, framework. And then what we do is we call in the right-hand side adapter, which I'm going to show to you, to you right now in a moment, uh, a method called update data. That is called on the adapter itself. So, the sequence is this. Something changes in, on, on the database. You, we are prepared for this because of the replication. We are prepared for this to visualize it on our screens though. How? By making a query, a view with options so that we can filter the incoming results. In this particular case, the query options is uh, based on time. It can be based on other criteria as well. We, once we have the live query, we attach it to uh, the database in such a way as to, when a particular document changes, we immediately get notified via the listener that, that this document has changed. <coughs> and then, in order to map the data from uh, the database, which we are notified about to the listener, we are calling a specific, we, we call a specific method on the adapter, the Android adapter that is running inside our application and populating the UI. That's the entire workflow. That's the most important part of the, how the application works, basically, from, from, from a user's point of view. So, and that was actually the point of my demo. I'm talking here about, as you can see, database, document, query, and live query, and maybe a module and an application. So all of these notions have been somewhat covered already. If we go back to the application that I'm just showing to you, when I'm changing the session on the server, the replication is already started as, as soon as the device has started. The application does not need to be started, but the device, it's not for the device to be started. And then, um, the transparent sync has uh, started at this point. Currently, there are no data to be visualized, but with the JavaScript uh, uh, script, I tried to update the server, and if that happened, it will follow exactly the workflow that I was telling you about right now. So basically, what will happen will be the sync will uh, catch that the something on the server has changed, the replication. It will replicate everything between the client and the server. The listener on the live query will see that this document has changed, and it will notify uh, the UI thread that I just showed to you. It says run on UI thread, and then the callback is on that one. And that one will call the method on the adapter and pass it the change data. And the adapter, which maps to the user interface, will update the user interface. That's exactly what's happening. Make sense? Okay. So that was about the uh, let's how much time? Is it? Oh, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll talk for about uh, five more minutes and then five minutes for question and answers. I want to maybe to go a little bit more about how this looks on the adapter side as well. So basically what's happening is you see there is a handle on the right row adapter that I just showed to you on the application and there is a method update data. Let's see what's that. So it's actually, it's relatively easy. So update data receives a 
a, a list of session models which need to populate in a list the, the right hand uh, 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 drawer. And it, we create a specific view for each one of them, populated with data and presented to the user. In order for this for the update to be seen on the UI, we also need to call notify data send change. So that Android knows it's time to withdraw the view. That's all it's needed. But on top of that, because that right hand side adapter, uh, that right hand side that element here has a um, some buttons here, uh, we have to yeah, the list of the sessions that's here should actually show up as well in, the, in my schedule if I have signed up for those sessions. Multiple parts of the application need to receive this update. That's what I tried to say. The way we decided to do it was by using uh, broadcasts, broadcast receivers and uh, emitters. And uh, since then, for my last project, I have not been using this anymore because these are very cumbersome things to use these broadcast receivers. Initially, I was using the, uh, there is a bus implementation which is called Local Broadcast Manager, which actually only wraps the locally transmitted broadcast, does not broadcast them everywhere. But lately, I have been using an event bus called uh, Green Robot, which allows to detach the, detach the um, producer of the broadcasts and the um, receiver of the broadcast by introducing a mid entity which is uh, the bus. It's a sequential bus and there are subscribers and producers of events. So everybody just like connects to the bus, puts puts an event, like in this case the event would be there are no there, there are new data. So you don't broadcast for anyone to explicitly register for that broadcast, but they all register for the events on the bus. So that is uh, also needed, although it's not strictly couch-based. But couch-based does not have a provision to update simultaneously multiple parts of the uh, application. And that is why when I went in October, I showed this implementation to them, to the implementers, and told them, is that a good, do you have a better idea? Because we need to show that after the change has been uh, received on the couch-based end, we need to somehow let the user uh, be aware, or we need, to be, we need to be able to visualize the change. They said, we are not concerned with that. We don't plan any support of, and maybe they are right, uh, we don't plan any support at this high of a level. So that is an additional work that somebody needs to do if one needs to actually use Cowboy. So if you try to enumerate how much work that one needs to do, imagine that, installing the entire infrastructure, configuring it, then getting all of the pieces on the mobile side in, in place, then writing models and model mappers, then defining the sync push and pull, then uh, also making sure that the, the UI is properly updated on multiple places as well. So it's quite a bit of work. And it is something that uh, is quite easy to mess up. And that is why it has to be covered by unit tests as much as possible. Is there anything else that they was planning to say? Oh, okay, last thing. Document to session. We are talking about mappers, right? We want to uh, transform a JSON document to a session model. All right, so this is done by us. We define our own closure classes, document to session transformer. We have an interface, generic interface that is implemented. And then we define methods on that interface, override, uh, how to transform a document into a session model, and vice versa. So you have to write your own model mapping. I was hoping that it's done already. As I mentioned, the iOS site has it, but Android it still doesn't. Last I checked yesterday. So one has to write this as well. And if you take a look at the, this simple prototype, how many classes does it have? Just to give you a. something is interesting, you see something is interesting here, let me know and we'll uh, take a look also at some of those as well. Yeah, so we have our security, identity, digest handle, password for the user, time range. Did I miss something to the packaging? Yeah. So the UI, 
this is where actually most of the cloud-based stuff resides. These options that I, that I mentioned, how to update the query, and how to do the synchronization. Application type synchro. These are query updatable, query update scheduler. So, yeah, we even have, we even implemented something that is not that easy to implement. Business users would like, as I mentioned, they are extremely impatient and they, they want to be prompted. They want to know to be actively pushed to do something or reminded to do something. And because all of these sessions go over time and they expire or they are finished and then they should not be shown, they go somewhere, they are removed from the views. But the sessions that are still in the agenda for the day, they have associated timers. So we had to implement a timer for every screen and update it in a very efficient manner, just as to show to this session in that room, there are one minute and 36 seconds. It had to be that, that precise for, for the users actually to, to, to be able to use it. And so all of the implementation, that most of these synchronization uh, techniques and the, the application areas that they are uh, accustomed to, they, all of them has to use because everything, every, the moment something becomes real time and uh, transparent, as it is in this case, that same moment the user has to be kept very uh, aware, <laughs> very aware. <laughs> of, of, the, of, of the timing. Everything has to happen in a very precise time frame. And that's why we want this. Okay, that was the so I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> that was unexpected. It's just some, uh, some more resources. Okay, so the first link is the PowerPoint slide framework itself with all that's needed. The developer day in October for Couchbase. And then the central side, the third link is the central side for all things mobile on Couchbase. And that concludes my presentation, Q and A. So I have a quick question about this. So is that those applications which I whatever month this deployed on application server, application server, but uh, you initiate that. That's not part of Couchbase, nor it is necessary for other types of work. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you guys. Oh, a plug. As I mentioned, my company is doing consulting, Android, and also web services. And also, this slide presentation is already published on the website, objectives.com slash presentations. I will put a link into the meetup group for that one as well, for that effect. Feel free to contact me with all of your needs. They will be met with understanding and fulfilled to the most extreme. So if you, if you have a problem that you cannot solve, and you are willing to pay for it. <laughs> 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 Okay, last chance, a dollar.